Hey guys, Stockaholics, thank you guys for being here today. The container ship market is normalizing. A year ago, I made a video talking about the container ship segment and why I was bearish on it. Yes, I am still bearish to this day. That video that I made, it had was the worst performing video in terms of the like to dislike uh, ratio I have ever had on this channel and also in terms of the comment negativity. Despite that, I think a lot of the things that I said in that video were correct. To quickly summarize that video, I mentioned that I thought that the demand for container ships was unsustainable and this was a result of the uh, medical event uh, stimulus related spending and a lot of that going to uh, good spending and a lot of that coming and artificially bloating up the container ship market. Uh, some of the other things I mentioned in that video is that I thought there, there was a bull up effect taking place and that we can see this happened in the last couple of months when some other uh, retail companies out there like Target and Walmart have said that they're uh, their inventories are artificially high. Uh, I thought in this video that I made that these guys were ordering too much inventory in anticipation of a demand that was unsustainable. And uh, I also mentioned that I thought that the supply was starting to get out of hand uh, in terms of container ship ordering. And uh, I also mentioned the, uh, what do you, the congestion in that I thought that the congestion related to the ports and uh, the, the issues and revolving around getting goods from point A to B related to the medical event would be resolved. Now, of those things, if there was anything that I got wrong in that video, it would definitely be congestion in the container ship market. The congestion to this day is still actually quite elevated, uh, but I would say that the, all of the other things I mentioned has come to fruition in the, the 12 months since I've made that video. Now, I am still bearish to this day, uh, but I still follow the container ship market because I think that there are things that I can learn from this space that translate into other spaces and other investments. And because this is a cyclical business, I know that at some time in the future that this is a cyclical market after a long enough period in a bear market, there will be a reasonable investment that I can make in the space with some high quality companies out there. Recently, I listened to a conference call from Maersk and a conference call from Zim. And yes, they are very different businesses in the space, but they both have a lens and a picture and a view on the container ship market. And I want to share some of the ideas that these guys were talking about and then some of my ideas surrounding those uh, things that they were sharing. Okay. <laughs> uh, first of all, spot rates, they are, uh, they've been dropping uh, over the last, uh, I think since September they peaked in terms of spot rates. Uh, and the spot rates peaked at around 11,000, which was insanely high for <laughs> container ships. I think the highest they ever earned uh, in terms of spot. And today they're, the spot rates are around 5,800. 5, so they co have come down uh, significantly since then, around 50%. Now, the container ship market is largely long-term. It, it's not so much in the spot business compared to uh, you know, bulkers and uh, the uh, tankers. A lot of the business that takes place in the container ship market is long term. And the long term charter rates for the container ship market are still very, very high, near all time highs, but they're beginning to come down. And because spot rates are beginning to come down, I would also expect that these long term charter rates are going to begin to come down as well. By the way, I also mentioned that this doesn't matter in terms of share prices because the market is forward looking and because the market knows that the spot market ultimately dictates these long term rates, that the share prices will come down as spot rates come down. And that is exactly what happened. OK, now I wanted to talk also about congestion because that was, again, one of the things that I got wrong and is still quite high to this day to this day. There's a comment from uh, Soren Sko of Maersk and he's talking about congestion on this call. 
In conversation with investors in the past quarter, I was frequently confronted with questions around the development of global congestion. As we all know, congestion really ramped up last year in the U.S. West Coast as import volumes jumped up at the same time as labor supply, longshoremen, truck drivers, and warehouse workers dropped because of the medical event. We had expected the congestion to ease by the mid mid this year as demand would moderate myself included but as we can see on his chart in the u.s they remain at very high levels the situation on the ground have eased that while congestion has eased a bit on the west coast congestion has spread to the east coast and to europe even though european volumes are essentially in line with pre-pandemic levels but containers are just not moving off the terminals as fast as we would like to see. As there is inefficiencies in this market, it leads to a, a floor in terms of their earnings. One simple example on the West Coast, we have massive problems getting rail cars. Yesterday, we had 8,500 containers in our Los Angeles terminal waiting for rail cars, which is three times or four times the average rail cars from a year ago. Across the East Coast, the West Coast, and Europe, we see issues in getting enough labor to trucks and with customers not picking up containers uh, because of full inventories. I wanted to talk a little bit about supply, okay? This is the main reason I would ever be bearish on any shipping segment. And guys, if I'm gonna be honest on the container ship market, the supply is looking atrocious. Now, uh, before the pandemic, the order book to the fleet order book percent ratio in terms of the amount of ships that were coming online was at 10%. Today, it is over 30% and every single day it is growing. As long as these guys have positive earnings, they will continue to order more ships. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of this ordering spree, it gets as high as 40%. And if we're thinking about demand, you know, is there going to be 30 to 40% of demand to accommodate that amount of supply i would be hard pressed to say that it will be in the coming years okay and so uh the on these conference calls these guys kind of try and dodge these they kind of they they throw some other <laughs> things out there for the investors to kind of say hey look at this instead one of the ideas they talk about i think i'll talk a little bit uh, more about in this video later is the imo regulations but if you they're, they're grasping at straws because the supply is bad in terms of the order book for containers, right? Okay, uh, moving on to demand. Uh, these guys also say that rates may have peaked, then that they expect flat to negative demand for the rest of the year. Uh, U.S. retail sales has been flat for a few quarters. And like I mentioned, there are some euphemisms. They call this uh, normalization, but... If we're going to talk about normalization, you know, if we're going to really go back to the rates that were prior to the pandemic, those were not really uh, tremendously profitable rates. And so if that's the normalization we're talking about, that's not uh, tremendously exciting. <laughs> but they have some comments on the call and it's not all doom and gloom. I think, again, this is from Maersk on, on inventories and ordering. Import volumes are still high, okay, but they expect them to get lower. A couple of effects, effectively, that's a strange sentence. <laughs> Some of the inventory that we see, particularly in the US, where there's good data is if you will, they have the wrong inventory. So our customers are complaining that they have the wrong inventory. And still, it has to import, if you will, the right inventory. They've been ordering a lot of inventory related to the medical event. If we're thinking about durable goods, you're thinking about what I think this guy's going to talk about in a second. A lot of that stuff has already been ordered. We're thinking about I, things like, you know, masks, weird stuff like that related to pet, the uh, medical event. The, the demand for that is kind of non-existent in these days. But as the economy has been reopening, there is demand for some new stuff or some prior stuff that has not been in as much demand uh, previously, right? Okay, uh, continuing on to the comments. And the other effect plays at certain product categories, especially in durable goods. I mean, pretty much everybody has bought the new couch, the new set of lounge furniture, the new TV screen, whatever. All the things that we were all spending our money on during the medical event. 
And that means that they cannot be. You're not going to buy another TV screen, right? Whereas a lot of the fast moving stuff, and especially in the retail lifestyle and retail goods lately, actually there is still very strong demand. And we see our customers being very busy in terms of imports into, <clears throat> excuse me, the US. Okay, uh, some of the other things that they were talking about, uh, they're talking about costs. You know, uh, the last several months, the uh, fuel costs have been very high, although those are beginning to come down. Lately, we've seen oil price go from 130 to uh, 80, 90 or so. And so uh, that is still very elevated. And like many other expenses, the, com the, the costs in a lot of these container companies are also uh, beginning to go up. <clears throat> Like I also mentioned, they are making a big deal out of these uh, IMO 2023 uh, regulations. These They have something where they actually, the Maris conference call, they were expecting these IMO regulations, the EEXI, to significantly slow the overall container ship fleet, especially on these older vessels. And they expect that to have the equivalent effect of a net reduction of the supply of the overall fleet from five to 15%. Now, uh, I know these shipping companies, I know that they talk about uh, environmental regulations. They've done this many times in the past. And I think that these, these regulations do have effects, but I do believe that they have a tendency to overstate their actual effect. Now, even if we are taking that five to 15% uh, uh, amount into, uh, let's take it at face value and say that they're absolutely correct that there's a this is going to cause a 5 to 15% inefficiency in the overall container market well <laughs> they've also mentioned that they think that a lot of demand is coming down because of inflationary pressures and because of the lack of demand that we've seen previously and that we also they also know that we have a supply that's exceeding 30 to 35%. So even if we take them that at these face value, which I think is overstated of five to 15%, it is still unlikely to balance the market. It is still very likely to cause an oversupply in the market despite these more stringent IMO regulations in the future. Now, I would say when we do enter an official bear market, when these inefficiencies become pronounced on the balance sheets in these container ship companies, when their earnings have suffered long enough, and when they're stuck with an oversupply and an oversupply of these inefficient non-IMO compliant vessels after a length of time, then that will lead to scrapping of these inefficient vessels. And it is more likely to lead to these vessels removed remove from the fleet in a shorter duration of time uh, relative to what it would have been previously. So I, what, basically what I'm trying to say is I think that there is effect in these IMO regulations over long periods of time, but I think that these, these shipping companies, no matter what segment they are in, they have a tendency to overstate them. Okay, um, I get there's some comments uh, from Soren Sko on Maersk on that. <laughs> Hopefully my comments don't, uh, detract from his very knowledgeable, knowledgeable comments. Yeah, thank you. This is a relatively new, if you will, legislation, and we're still trying to figure out what the impact will be on supply because there are different ways of improving the energy rating of old ships. You can use biofuels, you can slow down speed, and that's where they think a lot of the inefficiencies are gonna come from, the slowing speeds. Will uh, the energy rating of old ships you can use biofuels, you can slow down, will be the two most obvious ways of moving the energy rating from a D to a C. And we have only at this point some, if you will, very high levels numbers based on our own fleet. So they're not taking into account to all the ships on the market. But it looks like in order to comply, we will need somewhere between five to 15% more capacity. If the response, if the way we comply is by lowering the speed, so 5% to 15% more capacity up towards 2030. And that's a long period of time, right? So this will only, with that being said, so that is actually a quite significant impact if the compliance is based on slowing down speeds, which we think is most likely given the shortage of biofuel and the price of biofuel. But quite, of course, that's still outstanding. 
Now, one of the things these guys also don't mention is that these rules, if you take it in the context of an energy crisis, I would suspect that these rules could simply change where they could say, you know what, let's delay these to some point in the future. There's a situation going on right now. We need to make sure that the container and the overall shipping industry can get their goods from point A to point B to help alleviate the overall energy situation, right? And the, although we're talking about container ships, these IMO regulations also impact things like bulkers and tankers as well, okay? Which get these energy-related commodities to uh, Europe in particular, okay? Now, what is also outstanding is a clear understanding of how this will be enforced and the timeline. That's one of the things I also question as well. It's like, well, how are you going to enforce a speed limit in the middle of the ocean? Are you going to monitor these guys? Are you going to fine them if they, you know, let's say they speed up in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? How would you know, right? Are you going to track these guys? And do you, is there even the motivation to do that? I don't know, right? There could be, but that, again, this is very speculative, right? Uh, and as far as we know, it will only really be enforced from 2024 and 2025, right? So there, in the next coming years, we're going to see a very large supply hitting the market. And even if you are counting on these, these regulations to sort of balance the market in the coming years, they don't expect it to be enforced as that supply is hitting the market, right? And therefore, the short-term impact may be very, regu uh, very limited. Longer term, it's actually the way we understand the regulation at this point are quite significant. On the longer term, I think I agree. I think that it will have some impact, but I would like to see what that is. And again, I think it's more likely that it's going to impact it, the scrapping in a, a bear market. Okay. Anyway, that is the, the video. These are some of my thoughts, some of the comments on the container ship market. If you disagree, uh, like my last video, there were a lot of comments that disagree with some of these comments uh, uh, on my ideas. If you disagree, I would challenge you to say why I'm wrong. Because that's one of the things that I've never saw in the video before. They said I was an idiot. I didn't know what I was talking about and that I was wrong. And that's fine. I may be all of those things. But I, you are too if you cannot explain to me why I'm wrong. And so if you think that I'm wrong and that the container ship market is still in a bull market and these share prices are likely to appreciate in the coming months and years, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what companies are best suited. I will check them out as well to this normalization in the market. And I'd be curious to hear any of your overall thoughts and comments on the space. Have a great week.